thank the 12th grade boys and girls you had the auditorium clean up for uh, uh, this month. This is uh, the beginning of the month, so uh, you will be starting uh, today for the entire month for that, and, and we appreciate the job that you all do in this. For our Sunday night for the Savior Report, there were 35 uh, Bible cards. Brothers courses last week, and there were 56 cards uh, that were uh, uh, mailed out. So, uh, and uh, uh, today will be uh, Zone One's uh, turn uh, Sunday night for the Savior. Uh, this uh, announcement is for our ladies. Uh, uh, all those ladies that are interested in the uh, Ladies' Day. Uh, please plan to meet Sunday, June the 12th at 3.30 uh, in, the, uh, in the library. That's June 12th at 3.30. There will be a zone leaders and assistant leaders um, today, uh, right after worship, uh, to uh, discuss plans for the uh, Picnic, so uh, we all need to be a part of that. That is uh, zone leaders or zone leaders. Let's remember all of those in our prayers that are sick. We can pick up one of our newsletters that are in the uh, out in the foyer there, and uh, you can have a list of uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that is sick that we may be able to keep in our prayers. Announcements that I have at this time, and the order of our worship, uh, Brother John Maynard will uh, have our opening prayer, and Jay will be our song leader, and David Joseph will be uh, reading the uh, scripture for us this uh, morning, and uh, Brother Steve Weiss will be uh, speaking to us. So, let us prepare for uh, our worship at this time, and let's go to God. Our Father, we are grateful to you for the day. We are so thankful that you have blessed us with the night's rest. We can be here at this hour to worship you. We pray, Father, as we worship you, that all things will be done according to your will. We thank you for your love you for all the things that you do. We pray this prayer in the name of your dear son, Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Our first song this morning will be number 108. Number 108. This is Jesus Loves Me. If you would, please stand. <clears throat> was in the first, second, and fifth verses of this song. <clears throat> if you have a little sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. He who died. Heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus, take this heart of mine, make it pure and holy thine. On 
thus you died for me. I will try to live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. You may be seated. <clears throat> The song we'll sing the opening prayer will be number 528. Number 528, The Lily of the Valley. We'll sing the first and third verses of this song. If you have it, let's sing. I have found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my word, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me and forsake me here. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. Oh, wall of fire about me, I've never now to fear. With his manna, he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweep me up to glory to see his face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and Star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Will you bow with me as we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we come before you morning thanking you, Heavenly Father, for all the blessings that you bless us with. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your kindness that you show us. We thank you for your Son, Jesus, who died for us. And Heavenly Father, we know without him that we would be totally lost. We are grateful for his love and for his willingness to die on the cross for us. And Heavenly Father, may we strive hard to live the Christian life each day. May we study your word, and we are thankful that we can hold it in our hands and read it and know what you have us to do. And Heavenly Father, may we strive hard to live that Christian life every day. We thank you for our missionaries. And Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the works that they do. May we support them and continue to work with them diligently, Heavenly Father, for they do many good works in the field. And they give time and they give their, their lives really to to teach and to help them to understand what they need to do so that they might be able to teach others. We're grateful for that great work. Be with them, bless them, watch over them, and Heavenly Father, give them good help that they can continue to do that work. We thank you for the opportunities that we have here to be involved and to our And Heavenly Father, we ask that you'll be with us and may we all strive hard to do that which is good and, and to work and to carry your gospel to others and help teach others a good example before others. And Heavenly Father, be with our leaders. Bless these three men. Watch over them. Give them good health. And Heavenly Father, may they give us the directions that we go in and the good works that we need to be involved in. And Heavenly Father, we know that we have those that are sick. We ask that you be with them and bless them. Be with John and Carlson. Be with Ludie Talbot and uh, Charles Lewis, Brenda Maynard, Maria Martin, and Father, and many others that 
are sick, we ask to give them an official will to give them reasonable help. Heavenly Father, may we all strive hard to do what's right. Forgive us of our sins. And Heavenly Father, we're grateful to have this time this morning to worship you, to honor you as our God, as our Creator. As we sing these songs, may our thoughts truly be centered on, on, upon you. And help when we take of the Lord's Supper. May our thoughts be centered on Jesus, Him dying on the cross, knowing what He did for us. And may we always remember what He did for us. Heavenly Father, we love You. We want to do what's good and right in Your sight. We offer this prayer in Your Son's name. Amen. The song before the Lord's Supper, we number 662. Number 662. And we'll sing the first verse of this song. <laughs> if you have it, let us sing. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was applied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to men. Oh, the mighty that God did spend at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Scripture reading before the Lord's Supper will come from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 through 29. 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 through 29. And it reads as follows. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. As ye eat of this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the, this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty in blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let us pray. Our mighty beloved Father, we thank you for the bread that we are about to be taking. And Father Lord, let us realize that the bread is represent the body of your beloved Son, and let us do it in the manner that it will be pleasing and sight. In the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the that, uh, that we are about to partake. As we partake this fruit of the vine, let us remember that it was your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for the remissions, who shed blood on the cross for the remissions. And let us partake it in a pleasing manner. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Song before the contribution be number six hundred eighty two. Number six eight two. We'll sing the first verse of this song. <coughs> if you have it, let us sing. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget my thorn crown brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy agony. Lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Scripture reading before the contribution will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. It reads as follows. Now concerning the collection for the saints, 
As I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be gatherings when I come. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for so many blessings that you have blessed us with throughout our lives. As we give back to you, please help us to give with a joyful heart, and also for the elders who will be taken in charge of the money to do well with the church in his hands. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The song of invitation after the lesson will be number 568. Number 568 will be our song of invitation. And before the lesson, we'll be singing number 723. Number 723. If you would. Number 723. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace, wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctified forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Maybe seated. Oh, it is to be with you this morning, praising God in such a fine fashion. We're thankful for your presence. You indeed add to our praise to God. Guests, thank you for coming our way. We're always thankful to have you with us. Glad that we can worship God together. We invite you to come every opportunity. Those who may be looking for a church home, please look no farther. Let us meet with you and indeed answer any questions you may have and encourage you in that. We've mentioned before, and I wanted to bring to your attention, house to house, heart to heart. We have a new banner out in the foyer out there, and we're starting a project that we need your help with. If you've never read uh, one of these magazines, House to House, Heart to Heart, please pick one up and read it. You will be encouraged. It's well written. It is well laid out, very colorful, very uh, encouraging and engaging. And so I want you to pick it up and read one. If you've not read this issue, 
and read it. But I also want to ask, we're, we've ordered a thousand extra copies to come here, and that'll be coming every two months. And so we want to ask everyone to pick three copies as you go out the door. They're on the table out there at this door, and also uh, some out here on that table on that side, and uh, we'll be making sure that they're available. Uh, pick up two or three and hand them out to your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, people you may meet along the way, and invite them to read it, and then invite them to church as well. And so please uh, take one of these. Uh, I've had several people from the community uh, tell me that they really love this publication. We've had pastors come to the church because they receive house to house, heart to heart. And so please pick one of those up and make sure that we give out all of those thousand copies and not leave them laying around, uh, not being used. So please uh, pick those up and help us with this good work. Today, I want to start a series of lessons and uh, they'll be teaching us who is God? It is essential that we know who God is if we're going to follow after Him. If we're going to be faithful to Him. Uh, David Shannon, if you haven't had a chance to pick up one of the DVDs or uh, CDs rather, uh, out here on the table, please do that or they're available on the website that David Shannon presented here. I encourage you to do that. Uh, excellent lessons. Uh, one of his lessons had a triangle uh, called the Pyramid of on it. And uh, I have taken this and uh, modified it a little bit for the purposes of this lesson. Uh, and also in way of encouragement for us. Of this pyramid is the word beliefs. And here is the very foundation that we have in our trust and service of God. It brings about the things that we count valuable. If you believe that gold is your number one treasure, then that will be what you will seek after is gold. If you believe that God is your number one treasure, then you will seek after God. But what it is that you believe it will create in you your values. And so it is essential that we get the beliefs right in order to have the right value. And then out of our values come action. And friends, down below, uh, the beliefs and values are something that are in front of you. Uh, and, but it is the actions. So many times we focus on the actions. And we fail to focus on the beliefs and the values that bring about. If we get the beliefs right and the values right, then the actions will come out of that right. And so we want to focus on it. We don't see the beliefs and the values, but we do see the actions. And so often we focus on that. You know, as parents, don't we do the same kind of thing with our children? We tell them, don't do this, do that. Don't. But we don't teach them the right beliefs in order that they might have the right values in order that the right actions. We focus on the actions. If we'll get that foundation right, if we'll bring about those right beliefs that will generate the right values, then the actions will take care of themselves. And so we indeed have that kind of Thing so that the unseen will bring about the seen. A person's beliefs determine that person's values. Values determine actions. But what kind of beliefs do we have? Are they shallow? Are they uh, something that is strong? Are they what God would have us to have? Friends, we want to focus on that in order to help us to grow in our actions. But we want to create the right beliefs and the right values in order to bring that about. And in doing that, when we have the right beliefs that bring about the right values, that indeed are going to present, produce the right actions, then they're going to lead 
the right direction. That is to God. And so it is essential that we do this uh, in order to have this. But in the opposite of that, I want you to know that the world has a, created a pyramid of destruction. Now, of course, Satan is at the foundation of this. And he wants to present to you this pyramid that is at the base of the wrong beliefs. Now, that's his goal. That's what he's striving to do in order to create that in you, which of course bring about the wrong values. All beliefs bring about the wrong values will bring about the wrong actions. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 11 and 12, it says that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Do you see that in the world? But friends, I'm not talking to the world today. I'm sharing God's Word with us. We need to be strengthened in the right beliefs and correct wrong beliefs. We need to do away. We need to turn it upside down. We need to leave Satan behind and have in ourselves the right beliefs. Don't believe the lie. When we do it God's way, then we're going to have that right belief as our foundation. Amen. And then we're going to come out of that with the right values. Right, what is wrong? Well, I'm going to know what is right and what is wrong because of God's standard and not because of Satan. Not because what the world is pressuring me in order to do. And uh, I want to be pleasing to God and have at the top of my pyramid Him. Not someone else. Friends, I want to show you some illustrations about this. You remember Pharaoh when Moses came to him and uh, said to him that the God of heaven and earth said, my people go? And Pharaoh asked, Who is the Lord that I should obey His voice? Well, what did he believe? Did he believe in the God of heaven? Did he believe in the Egyptian gods, the God of Ra? That's what he believed in, wasn't it? And so that's what he trusted in. And out of his belief came his value. And his value did not include the Lord God of heaven and earth. And so out of that, his action was, Who is the Lord that I should believe obey his voice. But it was because of his beliefs that brought about his values that caused his actions to turn away from the God of heaven. Friends, we need to recognize that that doesn't just happen over in Egypt. It doesn't happen just in the world. But friends, it is infecting the church. And we must be careful. We must not allow such a thing to happen. It happened to the people of Israel after they had come across the Red Sea and after Joshua and that generation had gathered to their fathers. Another generation arose after them did not know the Lord nor the work which He had done for Israel. They didn't know. It's not that they didn't know about the God of heaven. It's not that they didn't know that He Across the Red Sea, but friends, they were being infected by those around them and by a lack of belief in the God of heaven that He could accomplish anything. He could do anything. And because of their belief, look at verse 11 and 12. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baal and forsook the Lord God of their fathers. You know, we ask the question, why do our children forsake the church? Is it because we have not instilled in them the right beliefs and the right values so that it might bring about the right actions? I want you to think about that seriously. Why do people leave the church that Jesus built? These people, they forsook. They left the God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt and they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were around them 
And they bowed down to them. And they provoked the Lord to anger. You see, that there arose that generation not know the Lord, and because of that, they began to believe in these false gods, these pagan gods, and seeking after their own pleasures and their own wisdom, their own will, rather than following God. And so they bowed down to these false gods. Are we guilty? Friends, we need to consider it. What do we believe? What do our children believe? What are their values that, that we are teaching them? Do we talk to them about God when we're walking away, when we're traveling here and there, when we're sitting at the table, when we're sitting in the living room? Or do we fail to teach them about God? Do we talk to them about their actions, but we don't talk to them about what they believe? To consider, we see it right there that the children of Israel, God's people, raised up a generation that did not know God. Today we're living in a time when people in the world do not know God. It's evident. It's evident in uh, the different. We see going on the robberies, the murderers, the drug use, uh, the suicides, the uh, all the people who have the wrong belief systems. We see rise of homosexuality, same-sex marriage. Uh, now, even in the use of bathrooms, uh, uh, you don't know which one to go into. People now are even considering not public restrooms anymore for the fear of someone. Using the wrong one. We're living in a world of people who do not know God. We must be different. We must know God. It brings about the question, who is God? Uh, Who is He that, like Pharaoh asked, who is the Lord that I should obey His voice? And so we need to have an answer And as I was thinking about this lesson, uh, I was thinking about, do I know God? What do I know about God? And could I tell somebody? If someone asked you, tell me about the God of heaven. How long would it take? Five minutes? One minute? What would you tell them about God? The God that you know. And so friends, we ought to consider that. And so one of the things that I was thinking about this is that God is eternal. In Genesis 21-33, Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba and there called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Now Abraham, of course, is called the father of the faithful. And so, planted that tree, and he called upon God. Not just some God, but the everlasting, everlasting God. He knew God. That He was eternal. Joshua, at the end of the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, wrote, The eternal God is your refuge, and are the everlasting arms. And so here we see Joshua, what he knew about God, what he understood. He was the eternal God, and indeed that is huge. Friends, we, do we wait to call upon God when we have a sickness, when we're about to have surgery, or so, some catastrophe comes upon us? Or do we believe in the God who is present every day? Well, here Joshua knew that he was eternal and that he was a daily refuge. Jesus understood it. From Exodus chapter 3, God had said to Moses there, I am that I am. Oh my. What a phrase. And then Jesus in John chapter 8 and verse 58 said, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. 
Now, now that, that's just strange syntax, isn't it? I, we don't speak like that. But Jesus understood perfectly what he before Abraham. Now, Abraham was some 2,100 years before Christ. But he said, before Abraham was, I am. There was never a time that Jesus was not there. Never a time that God was not there. But they are indeed eternal. Jesus calls Himself the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That is the beginning of time and the end of time. He is the source. In Genesis 1, verse number 1, God is also the Creator. Not only is He eternal, but He also has the power. When you look into the night sky and you see the farthest stars and the greatest galaxies and know that you only see a very small portion of what exists in the universe. God created it all. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 2 and verse talks about this is the history of the beginning. You know, sometimes we like to look back at history books and sometimes science will talk about the Big Bang as being the beginning of and such and such, but... Friends, this is the history book. The history book of God that teaches us about the beginning of the universe. And so in the beginning, God created. He is the one who did that. He created human beings. In Psalm 33, verse 6, beginning, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. Oh, how great He is. He is indeed the creator of all that we see and all that we stand upon. Friends, that is the God that we should know. Then also He is God the Father. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6, Paul wrote, Yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for Him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. Paul knew God. And this is one of the things that he knew about God, was that He is indeed the Father. And He is the Creator, one who, by whom are all things. And of course, Jesus, being there with Him, the Logos, who spoke these things into existence. The God that Paul knew. A verse, a passage that is familiar to all of us, I want you to consider as you think about Knowing God. Written by the shepherd David, who knew the Lord quite well. And he wrote many songs about Him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to consider this in the light of knowing God. Now here it doesn't say anything about I know God, not that particular phrase. But he knew that it was God who provided. It was God who led him. It, It was God who protected him. He knew that it was God that was watching over him. And because of the 
says, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friends, how amazing, how beautiful that is. God the Father. Psalm 139, verse 1 through 7. O Lord, You have searched me and known me, David writes. You know me down in my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path my li- and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, You know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid Your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from Your Spirit? Or where can I be from your presence? Oh, indeed. Who is God? It's too wonderful. The the books cannot contain it. A lifetime, a thousand lifetimes could not tell you who God is. He's too great for my finite mind. I admit that. I want you to understand that in Deuteronomy 29 29, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us, our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. (laughs) Oh, how beautiful it is. Everything, everything that you need to know about God is revealed in His Word. And so we don't have to guess. We don't have to wonder, although sometimes we do, don't we? Oh, sure, it's not wrong to wonder. Uh, but friends, uh, we cannot go beyond what is the Word. We cannot go beyond the things that have been revealed to us by God. But what is revealed is sufficient. For us to know God. For us to know Him well. We're going to see more about that later on. Uh, Friends, I want you to think back again to Judges 2 and verse 10. When that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord. Here we've had several funerals already of our faithful, experienced, strong members that we have relied on and looked to for the work of this congregation. They've left us. Who will fill their shoes? Who will rise up and be that strong and faithful Christian? Young people, I'm looking at you. Are you going to have the right beliefs that will generate the right values, that will bring about the right actions, that, that will prepare you for that strong and dedicated service in the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Is it going to cause you to stand up and to be that strong worker of God who is your Father? Are you going to know who God is and whose you are? But not just the young. We who are older, who have seen more moons, more moons, more seasons. Is it time for us to stand up? To be more dedicated? To take a greater role in the church? To show that we know God. And that we're going to serve Him with all of our heart. With all of our with all of our spirit. Mark adds, with all of our strength. Friends, we need that. We need it. And to make certain that a generation 
there in this place does not rise up that does not know God. Friends, it's up to us. Are we going to make certain that that does not happen? I'm calling upon you to make certain it doesn't. Because when we are strong in the Lord, when we know the Lord, then we're going to serve going to have that foundation that will bring about those values that will indeed cause us to have the right actions that show we are certain of our God. Amen. So friends, let us know who God is. The opposite of that, of course, 2, Corinthians 1, or 2 Thessalonians 1, 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those, now notice, who do not know God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, are we going to be consumed by flaming fire? Or shall we stand up and know God and obey His voice? Obey the gospel. Friends, we've got to stand. 1 John 5 and verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him. Now, now notice that understanding. That, that's our beliefs, that foundation. Given us that understanding and uh, that we may know Him who is true and we are in Him who is true in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. And notice, eternal life. We've got to grasp hold of it. We've got to know God in order to have that eternal life. If we don't know God, flaming fire. But knowing God, eternal life. First, His Son, Jesus, as well. Friends, we've got to follow this pyramid of life. We've got to create in ourselves. God has supplied, but we have to grasp hold in those right beliefs, understanding the Word of God. And then that will bring into our hearts the values that God would have us to have. And that will indeed produce the actions that God wants us to have. And that will lead us to life. Friends, who is God? The Bible is where you learn who God is. I might add with this, being people, those who know God, is a great help as well. Why is it important for us to bring our children to Bible class? Why is it important for us to come to Bible class? Don't we learn a lot about God in those classes? Why is it important for us to come to worship? Don't we learn a lot about God in our worship? Friends, we need to be present and we need to encourage others to be here as well. That we might know the God, the true God, and not be carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the whims and wishes of men by the philosophies that are out there in the world, but follow after what is in the Bible. Who is God? Friends, it is important. God is eternal. God is your Creator. And God is your Father. That's who God is. We're going to look at more later on. Uh, I left out some of the outline because I didn't want to go to morning. But we'll look at that later on, Lord willing. But who is God to you? Isn't that the real question? It's not who is God. God is God. But who is God to you? That's the question. So I ask you again, if somebody asks you to tell them what you know about God, how long would it take you? Friends, the beginning of knowing God is by believing in His Son. 
trusting the gospel that is preached of Jesus Christ. That indeed He lived a perfect life, that He died upon the cross, and that He was buried where He was in that grave, and yet He came out on that beautiful Sunday morning. Came out never to die again. Came out in to prove that He was the salvation of mankind. There is no other way. But if you believe in God, you believe in the Son, that your Son died and was resurrected, you in like manner can be buried with Him, having repented of your sins, and there every sin will be cleansed by His blood in that water. And then you rise up out of that burial, clean, newborn, a new creation, adopted in the family of God, every sin taken away, and there you have a new plaque, a new life to begin walking. Friends, that's the beginning of God. It's not the end, but it's the beginning of truly knowing God. Then you continue. Remember Jesus said, Go make disciples of nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the world. And so that is that beginning. And then we learn, we grow, we indeed are strengthened by the Word of God. Friends, we are not alone. But indeed adopted into God's family. That great and wonderful, most holy Father. We call God. Who is God to you? If you need to repent, we're here ready to pray with you. If we can help you in any way today, please stand while we stand together and sing this song. song will be number 730. If you are visiting with us, then uh, we appreciate you. We'd like to get to know you soon after our service ends, and we will meet again at 5 o'clock this evening, and then 
uh, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. <clears throat> Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you.